Hello everyone, my name is Dennis with DongSec or Donkey Security, whatever your heart desires. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the SOC Level 1 Alert Reporting Lab. Let's get on straight to it. Six tasks here. Task 1, introduction. During or after alert triage, L1 analysts may be uncertain about how to classify the alert, acquiring senior support or information from the system owner. Also, Level 1 may deal with real cyber attacks and breaches that need immediate attention and remediation actions. This room covers these cases by introducing three new terms, alert, reporting, escalation, and communication. Learning objectives, understand the need for SOC alert reporting and escalation, learn how to write alert comments or case reports properly, explore escalation methods and communication best practices, apply the knowledge to triage alerts in a simulated environment, and as well as uh, SOC dashboard, continue your journey in the SOC dashboard. This time you'll need to write professional reports and practice in escalating the alerts. Open the task website in a separate window by clicking on the SOC dashboard link below. And we want to the next task. All right, so let's click on this URL. Then we have our SOC dashboard right here. I'm ready to start. Yes, let's join this room. All right, alert funnel. In the previous room, you learned how to classify and triage alerts, but you might be curious about what happens next. How does your triage help prevent and stop breaches? This is a whole new topic that this room will cover soon, but for now, let's recall the path of the alerts. First level one analyst received alerts in a SIEM, uh, System Information Event Management, and an EDR, which is Endpoint Detection Response, or a Ticket Management Platform. Most of the alerts are closed as false positives or are handled on a level one level, but L level one level, L one level. <laughs> but complex and threatening ones are sent to level two that remedy most breaches. And to send alerts further, you need to learn three new items, reporting, escalation, and communication. So yeah, they, they have a little picture here, uh, VPN login, level one, defender alert, brute force, noise fil filtering, escalation, real fast level two. And then we got our level two right here, deep investigation and remediation start on incident response if needed and then we have our uh, digital forensics incident response which is incident handling and forensics cross team communication ultimate goal is to protect the corporate data okay ultimate goal is protect the corporate data before closing or passing the alert to level two you might have to report it depending on team standards and alert severity instead of a short alert comment you can be required to document your investigation in detail ensuring all relevant evidence is included this is especially true for true positives which require escalation alert escalation if the true positive alert requires additional actions or deeper investigation escalate it to a level two analyst for further review Following the agreed procedures, that's where your alert report comes in handy since level two will use it to get the initial context and spend less on the analysis from scratch. Communication. You may also need to communicate with other departments during or after the analysis. For example, ask the IT team if they confirm granting administrative privileges to some users or contact HR to get more information about the newly hired employee. Question one, what is the process of passing suspicious alerts to a level two analyst for review? What is the process? Well, we do know the first answer is alert. And we do have reporting and escalation. Escalation. Yes, alert escalation because process of passing suspicious alerts to a level two analyst. Uh, escalate at level two analyst for further review. For review, yes, so that those two make sense. What is the process of formally describing alert details and findings? This is really easy, just do alert reporting. Yeah, formally describing alert details and findings. Uh, let's see, alert, alert reporting. Uh, required to document your investigation in detail, ensuring all relevant evidence is included. Okay. Reporting guide, before we move on, it's essential to clarify which anyone would want L1 analysts to write reports in addition to marking them as true or false positives and why this topic cannot be underestimated. Having L1 analysts write alert reports serves several key purposes. All right, alert report purpose, provide contents for Escalation, explanation, a well-written report saves lots of time for L2 analysts. Also, it helps them quickly understand what happened. Safe hunting for records, raw seam logs are stored for 3 to 12 months, but alerts are kept indefinitely. As a result, it's better to keep all the concept, context inside the alert just in case. Prove investigation skills. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough, makes sense. Report writing is a great way to boost L1 skills by summarizing alerts. 
where port format so i've definitely talked about this a lot in my previous videos the five w's imagine yourself as an l2 analyst a digital forensics incident response team member or an it professional who needs to understand the alert what would you want to see in the report we recommend you follow the five w's approach and include at least these items in the report so who which user logs in runs a command or downloads a file what what exact action or event sequence was before when when exactly did the suspicious activity start and ended where which device ip or website was involved in the alert why the most important w the reasoning for your final verdict and then we got a another picture right here alert report checklist we talked about the five w's right uh double file extension creation so i believe this contains all the five w's right here right it's the phishing site free cat videos hd and the reason why they put these like parentheses on the dot is to defang it and the reason why you want to defang it is because if you're looking at a url and you click it by accident that could be a sign of a breach right because you don't go around clicking urls so you know defanging the url by putting a parentheses in the in the uh, dot right there just defangs it from being able to click it the timestamp downloads a file named cats 2025 mp4.exe so x exe likely mistaking it for a legitimate video is a executable which means it will execute a file upon opening just because it says mp4 doesn't mean it's not malicious you always have to look at the cool file name which is the dot exe as well uh virus total reports confirm that the file is a luma stealer malware aimed to exfiltrate sensitive data and establish a c2 channel and then further malicious or malware actions require deeper investigation. Escalator to L2 share the scene findings. Okay. According to the SOC dashboard, which user email leaked the sensitive document? And just look at look at the names of all these and it'll just something that says leaked. So sensitive document shared to external, which means a document has been shared from an external source. So we have our source user email here, which is the answer right here. And then we have our target user email, uh, shadow proton mail. And then the description just says the Google drive document stored inside in a important folder was shared outside though of the organization to a personal email. This action is a violation of corporate policies and must be reported to the compliance department. So yeah, that is the answer for that. Uh, looking at the new alerts, who is the sender of this suspicious, likely phishing email? So yeah, just looking at the email marked as phishing after delivery, only phishing email we have, according to all these alerts right here. Suspicious email, uh, center of the suspicious likely phishing email. Uh, Microsoft support, support at microsoft.com. 600 price increase, urgent notice, download the report, read the details. So it definitely, you know, gives the user a sense of urgency to open the report. And it's a report.rar. The main thing is, Microsoft says Microsoft does not have a direct support email address for contact. If you aren't able to reach them by phone, I recommend contacting the live chat support as they can respond to you in real time. So yeah, it definitely is a phishing email because there is no Microsoft support contact address. Okay, so open the phishing alert, read its details, try to understand the activity. Using the five W's plate, what file did you receive after writing a good report? I would just put it as severity because we don't really know if the IT or the, the user, the end user opened it or not. And I sent it to a level two analyst and I just wrote my five W's here and I click save and we do get a flag here and I'm supposed to not show the flag because that is try hack me's policy. So click submit. And that is the answer. Yeah, task four, after you have made a verdict and written your alert report, you must choose whether to escalate the alert to level two. I already did. Again, the answer may differ from team to team. The following recommendations would generally fit most SOC teams. You should escalate the alerts if the alert is an indicator of a major cyber attack, requiring deeper investigation or DFIR. Recommendation actions like malware removal, host isolation, or password reset are required. Communication with customers, partners, management, or law enforcement agencies is required. You just do not fully understand the alert and may need some help from more senior analysts. So yeah, we definitely shouldn't have escalated alert because we don't know if the end user opened it or not. And we don't even know the four, like if we don't even know that the alert is a indicator of a major cyber attack. No, we don't know that. So shouldn't have done that, but, and, but it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just a flab. 
to escalate the alert in most cases all you have to do is reassign the alert to the level two on shift and ping them in a corporate chat or in person and some teams though may re be required to create a formal written escalation request with dozens of required fields no matter what the agreements are level two will eventually receive the ticket from you read a report and contact you in case of any questions once everything is clear the level two analysts will typically research the alert details further validate if the alert is indeed a true positive and communicate with other departments if needed and for major incidents, start a formal incident and response process. SOC dashboard escalation procedure when writing a alert report and provider verdict, move the alert to in progress status, assign the alert to your level two and shift. Level two will achieve a notification and start from your report. Yeah, so we got another uh, escalation report. Hey, I'm Clark from Mitchell Got Fish again and entered your password to a fake logic page might need to contact her and rotate the credentials so level one sends that to level two says hey thank you we'll review the report asap so i would assume first is rotate the user credentials three to the email admin panel then back to four and then remind the user about phishing risks from clark from hr requesting l2 support hey i'm stuck on one alert named reflective dll injection to be honest not sure how to triage it correctly can you help me please so that to the level two says, hey, you got lucky. Let's have a quick call. Plan a knowledge sharing session for all level one analysts. Okay, yeah. Who's your current L2 in the SOC dashboard that you assign escalate the alerts to? Okay, so my current L2 is E. Fleming. That's the correct answer. What flag did you achieve by correcting escalating the alert from previous task to level two? Yeah, correctly escalate the alert earlier. Just edit the alert and click save again. So what I did, I just click the alert close and I assign it to Fleming and then I just click save and I do get a right, that was the correct answer so now investigate the second new alert in the queue and provide a detailed alert comment then decide if you need to escalate this alert and move on according to the process after you finish your triage you should receive a flag which is your answer second alert in the queue so I believe it's this alert right here description detects a spike of commands like who am I net user get 80 user often use 80 domain discovery unless the commands are confirmed to be part of IT activity or legitimate scripts device is likely compromised and requires immediate containment so the basis of this is so yeah i got the basis of this alert right here basically it is a reverse shell that has been spawned rev shell and the source was from command prompt and the grandparent process iis which is internet information services which is a web server that runs windows servers and from there the attacker got onto the host name which is dmz.ms and commands such as dir which lists the files and folders who am i basically you know who am i to show the privs and the username of the dmz.ms and then the net group domain admins to move laterally which is called lateral movement and the miter attack by looking at who are the domain admins in the space so i would do in progress status critical severity sign to level two and verdict as a true positive and they, we do get our flag the yeah, task five talk communication the escalation and reporting topics should sound straightforward and logical to you but as always it is easier said than done and you should be prepared for unexpected scenarios and know what to do in critical cases in the best scenario the SOC team has its own crisis communication procedures the guides and processes to help you and your teammates resolve the issues if not, you are advised to read the cases below and be prepared to handle them effectively. Communication cases, you need to escalate an urgent critical alert, but L2 is unavailable and doesn't respond for 30 minutes. Ensure you know where to find emergency contacts. First, try to call L2, then L3, then finally your manager. The alert about Slack slash Teams account compromise requires you to validate the login with the affected user. Do not contact the user through the breach chat. Use alternative contact methods like a phone call. You receive an overwhelming number of alerts during a short period of time, some of which are critical. To prioritize the alerts according to the workflow, but inform your L2 on shift about the situation. After a few days, you realize that you misclassified the alert and likely missed a malicious action. Immediately reach out to your L2 to explain your concerns. Threat actors can be silent for weeks before impact. You can not complete the alert triage since the SIEM logs are not parsed collectively. Do not complete the alert triage since the seam logs are not parsed correctly or are not searchable. Do not skip the alert. Investigate what you can and report the issue to your level two on shift or SOC engineer. Our communication by L2. Hi, our new backend developer tried to update Python but downloaded a data stealer instead. Works with customer data on that laptop and I'm afraid it was exfiltrated. Hi, sounds bad, right? And that's from level one. Sent to level two responds with hi, sounds bad, we'll investigate right now. Then level two initiates the incident response for the digital forensics and 
incident response team and then contact the legal and PR teams and that is with the team managers. Should you try to first contact your manager in case of a critical threat? No, because according to this right here, escalate an urgent critical threat, L2 is unavailable. First try contact L2, L3, then finally your manager. So nay. Should you merely contact your L2 if you think you missed out the attack? Let's see what it says right here. For a few days, you realize that you misclassified the alert, likely missed some malicious action. Yep, immediately reach out to your L2's place, explaining your concerns, so yes. Conclusion. Great job learning three important SOC skills, alert, reporting, escalation, and communication. These skills are essential for any L1 analyst. Alert reporting helps you per preserve and provide activity contact for L2. Escalation ensures threats are remedied in time and communication makes the coordination between SOC and other departments clear and effective. So yeah, definitely learned a lot with, I mean, I want to say a lot. I've already learned this stuff before, you know, SOC level one alert reporting by taking the SOC one exam and the exam prep, but it definitely is a good extra source of material if you do plan on taking a SOC one exam or just, you know, learning about alert reporting in general, such as the five W's. But yeah, like always, I'll see you when I see you in my next video. Peace out.